Now in this video I'm going to update what we've learned since the rest of the videos are filmed about potentially habitable, potentially Earth-like planets. In particular, about red dwarf planets and the most recent and most famous example, Proxima Centauri b. Now, if you remember this graph, this is showing how common planets are around different types of stars, ranging from very hot, bright stars to very low mass red dwarf stars, with sun-like stars, G-type stars in the middle, versus how far out they orbit around the star. And what you can see is that the less common close in, more common further out, but it flattens out beyond about 0.1 astronomical units, which is still pretty close in. But the low mass stars seem to have more planets than the high mass stars at radii. So it seems that red dwarf stars have lots of planets. A lot of these planets are very close in. And that kind of suggests that red dwarfs might be the best place to have habitable planets. They might be the home of most of the life in our own Milky Way galaxy. Well, why is that? Well, to begin with, people thought maybe the fact that we're only seeing habitable planets around red dwarfs is simply a, that's because the only place we can see them, and that is still true. But being able to find an Earth-like planet in mass around a sun-like star is really at the hair edge of what we can do. We might just about be able to do it very occasionally, whereas looking for potentially habitable planets around Dwarf stars is much easier because the star is smaller, it gets pulled around more by the radial motion. The planets are too much closer in to be in the, in the correct zone, so we see more transits and more, more oscillations. But what we can see from this data is that, sure, it's easier to find planets around these red dwarfs, but even after you take account of the fact that it's easier to find, there really are more there. So it's a double whammy. Not only are they easier to find, relatively speaking, but there seem to be more of them there. And most excitingly, this particular star, this is Proxima Centauri, which is the nearest star to our own sun at the moment. It's part of a triple star system. There's two more or less sun-like stars, Alpha Centauri A and B, which are 30 astronomical units apart, which is roughly as far apart as the uh, Sun and Neptune. And then way farther out, in a very distant orbit around them, the orbit's not very well understood, is Proxima Centauri. And for a long time, people thought it might just be coincidence it was near another trip, it does actually seem to be in a very, very long orbit around them, but it's a long way out. Proxima Centauri, despite being the nearest star to us, only about 1.3 parsecs away, is too faint to see with the naked eye. It's fairly obvious from the telescope. Nearest star, why is it so faint? Well, red dwarfs are just pathetically low luminosity stars. So even though it's so close, it's easy target with a piece of binoculars or a telescope, but too faint for the naked eye. And it, of course, has been studied, looking for planets. And the, the observation that showed planets around it was a radial velocity measurement. It's done by the European Southern Observatory. It was a combined effort using uh, the spectrograph at the very large, to, uh, the very large telescope, the VLT at uh, Paranal, and a HARP spectrometer a telescope at La Silla. Uh, this one was using the iodine cell method. This one spectrograph is put in a vacuum chamber and a very close temperature control and has a second fibre optic to scramble the light and to give calibration. So they're capable of achieving accuracy of about one metre per second, which is absolutely staggering, and it's what they needed in this case. And here's the data. What you can see is the radial velocity goes up but comes down. See from the data from the different instruments showing the same thing. And that gives us a lot of confidence. It's actually real if it's being seen by different instruments analyzed in different ways, um, with different calibration techniques. So I think most people would say, even though it's on the hairy edge of what's possible with modern telescopes, this does seem to be real. For a while, people thought they could actually see transits from it. It turned out that was not possible. Um, people have reanalyzed the data, it looks like there are no transits. So it's not an edge on orbit, unfortunately. It'd be probably too much to hope that a nearer star would happen to be an edge on orbit. Um, what it is, is a planet going around you know, 12 days and minimum mass about 1.2 Earth masses. Uh, and it's not edge on, of course, it's a minimum mass. If their orbit is very highly inclined, it could be considerably more massive than that. But probably it's sort of between 1.2 and 2 Earth masses or something like that, depending on the exact inclination, which we don't know. And that's really all we know about this planet. So all we can observe is the reflex motion wobble. 
doesn't transit, so we can't try and see the radius of the planet. We can't try and see if there's any gases in absorption. It's far too close and far too faint for us actually to directly image it. This is all the data we have. Of course, that doesn't stop us doing artist's impressions. Here's an artist's impression. So you can see they've made the planet rocky with some oceans, and you've got a star, Proxima Centauri, and in the distance, Alpha, B, Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B. And here again is a hypothetical view on the surface, once again with Proxima and Alpha A and B in the background, and they've guessed that it's a, a rocky planet with some sort of thin atmosphere, but that's a complete guess. We have absolutely no idea.